Welcome to Earth Science. It's time for the metamorphic lab, which is generally the hardest of the three rock labs. So that combined with um, how difficult it is to work off of these rock lab things on the internet, I tried to make it as easy as I can. Get some more easy points in there just for playing with this reference table a little bit. So let's talk about a couple of things that are on here. Yeah, this is some review from yesterday, but also some things to look out for. Um, your rocks are going to fall into two categories. Either they are foliated, which means you can see some sort of alignment of minerals in them. And I tried to give some hints on the quiz, you'll see it. And if the mineral alignments are so obvious that they're like big, bold stripes, might not be a bad idea to write stripes right in there. Look at that. Look at that handwriting. Stripes. Um, that's banding. All right, so the thing that I always point out here is what happens... And we usually do this pretty complicated graph on it, and we're going to skip it this year. You guys get lucky there. But what really happens is that this little blurb right here is kind of important. The heat and pressure increases. So under some heat and pressure, you'll form this. And then as that heat and pressure increases and increases and increases, you get through those rock types. Hint, hint, I made that fairly obvious on the quiz, so check that out. Look for that. These comments here, too. There's there's hints with that, so I know there's a lot of words here, but check them out quick. Give them a quick read. Uh, down here with the non-foliated, no mineral alignment rocks, um, a couple are going to be uh, hinted at with their composition, so make sure you look at that and come down here. And again, if we were in class, there's a test we do with acid for calcite, and that makes it obvious. I mean, that, that would do that, but since you guys don't have the rocks or bottles of acid, and I don't know how to do that in a picture, I just kind of wrote, hey, this one's made out of calcite. We're just going to make it obvious which one it is. A couple of the trickier ones, anthracite coal, similar to the other coal one. I don't really have a good way of saying what this is other than, hey, here's what it looks like. It's um, It looks really very similar, especially on the uh, computer screen, to the bituminous coal from sedimentary. This is just put under heat and pressure. Sometimes it's called hard coal. It's kind of black, kind of massive. You'll see it. It's the only one that really looks like a lump of coal. What else? Meta conglomerate. The way to get that one is this pebbles may be distorted or stretched, but the way to get this one is really that you got to know what conglomerate is. So going back to the sedimentary lab that you guys already did, hopefully, um, if you remember that conglomerate contains rounded fragments that are of all mixed particle sizes, take that, squish it, and you're going to take all of those mixed particle sizes but kind of flatten them and distort them so they'll be more aligned which is tempting to say that's foliation, but it's not really considered foliation because it's not the minerals that are doing it, it's just the bits within the rock. Oh, what else? Hornfels is like, there's no, it can be made of anything. It can be in various settings. It can have various colors. It can have various textures. It's a mess. There's really not a very easy way to really teach what that is. There's a hint here. So maybe you'll figure out what number three is. But, uh... That's that. So let's quickly just mention this this idea here, and then we'll probably call it good. The types of metamorphism. There's regional metamorphism, and there's contact metamorphism. Yesterday I mentioned something about how India is slamming into Asia tectonically, creating the Himalaya Mountains, and deep within that there's going to be a lot of heat and pressure. That's a huge region, and within that huge region, deep within those mountains, you'd be forming these kinds of rocks. The tops of those mountains are actually sedimentary. It's limestone. So there's kind of all of geology in one sentence. The top of the tallest mountains on Earth are made of limestone that formed below sea level and have uplifted that high in the air tectonically. The other type of metamorphism, and this is really what Hornfels kind of gets broadly categorized as, is contact. So when you've got a situation like this, if we go all the way back to last week with magma trying to work its way to the surface, when it touches other rock, whether that be igneous sedimentary or metamorphic, it's going to... This is going to be important when we do Earth history. It's going to touch the rock and alter it a little bit. So we draw these little squiggles on there to represent that in diagrams in geology. But what that means is that this hot magma, melted rock, contacted this, didn't melt it, but altered the minerals within it. Contact metamorphism, touching metamorphism. And Hornfels really is the, uh, the big guy with that. But again, since it looks so variable, it can be so variable... Don't mess that one up. That's a freebie. What else? I think this should just about do it. So check those out. There's nine rocks on this. There's nine rocks on the lab. 
make sure you make sure you're reading the post of the day get that lab punch those in and there's some other important stuff that's going to be on there today please read the post of the day that'd be good news for you good to see you happy friday welcome to our science